February 29th. On this day, we keep the memory of our venerable God-bearing fathers, John Cashin and Germanus. Our father Cashin, chosen by God to bring the illumination of Eastern monasticism to the West, was born providentially on the borders of two worlds in Scythia Minor, at the mouth of the Danube, nowadays Romania. He came of a distinguished family and was well educated in classical literature. Having a great thirst for perfection, he turned away, while still young, from the deceptive attractions of a worldly life. He and his friend Germanus, his brother not by birth, but his brother in spirit, they set off for the Holy Land and they became monks at a monastery in Bethlehem. When they had been initiated into the principle of the Canobitic life and had learned of the life led by the monks of Palestine, Mesopotamia and Cappadocia, they felt within themselves a desire for greater perfection and decided to seek out the anchorites of the Egyptian deserts. They had heard of the feasts from St. Pavnutius who had fled from the praise of men to their monastery. After some hesitation, the abbot gave his blessing on their promise to return in good time. Having admired the constitution of the Canobitic communities of the Nile Delta, John and Germanus plunged into the desert. Wherever they went, they eagerly sought out holy solitaries in whom they might revere the splendor of grace and the variety of its fruits while inquiring at length about the science of the soul. They soon realized that to assimilate the heavenly teaching of these servants of God would require spending a long time sharing their lives. In a quandary because of the promise made to their abbot, they asked the advice of Abba Joseph, who told them after a night of vigil not to worry about an undertaking rashly given, and that it would be for greater advantage for them to remain in Egypt. Reassured by the elder, they spent seven years in Egypt, keenly pursuing their investigation of spiritual things. Going from place to place, they got as far as the famous desert of Scetis, founded by St. Macarius the Great, the glorious desert worthy of all men's praise, where a great many monks strove in asceticism, among whom the holy Abbas Moses, Serapion, Theonas, Isaac, and the priest Paphnutius shone especially bright. They were much edified when Abba Pafnutius told them that it is not enough for a monk to renounce the world physically by giving up his goods so as to devote himself to the care of his soul in asceticism and silence. There is also a second renunciation to be made, which consists in shedding old habits and the passions by a long, patient struggle full of pitfalls to attain purity of heart. Such is the monk's aim, to converse ceaselessly with God through the continuous prayer that the intellect, not dispersed in worldly cares, raises in peace and tranquility in the purified sanctuary of the heart. And the completion of his work is life everlasting, union with God, of which one can already acquire the earnest here below through holy charity. Having reached the limit of the second renunciation, with a soul straining towards the only thing to be desired, the monk then must undertake the third renunciation, which contains all perfection and consists in banishing all memory of the world in order to let himself be carried away by God to the eternal mansions in a state of unutterable joy and a flood of divine light. Taught thus concerning the pinnacles of monastic experience and contemplating the living expression in these illustrious anchorites, the two friends devoted themselves with great zeal to contemplative life during their years at Scatis. 
in the silence of his cell, St. John Cashin experienced for himself the bitter warfare of the God-loving soul against passionate thoughts, envious demons, and especially against Acadia or sloth, by which hermits are tormented and tempted to abandon their retreat. From this personal experience, and from the teaching of the great Evagrius whom he met at Nitria, he derived a precise doctrine of spiritual combat and of the eight basic passions, gluttony, fornication, avarice, anger, sadness, acadia, vainglory, and pride. After seven years, John and Germanus returned to Bethlehem. The abbot gave them permission to leave henceforth in the desert, and they hastened back to Egypt. However, with Archbishop Theophilus of Alexandria breathing fire against monks suspected of originism, the quiet needed for contemplation was not to be found. Turmoil and fear were widespread. Three hundred monks fled to Nitria, while John and Germanus followed another group of about fifty who decided to seek refuge at Constantinople in the shadow of the great Saint John Chrysostom. As soon as the Holy Archbishop set eyes on them, he discerned unerringly the quality of their souls. He succeeded in persuading Germanus to receive the priesthood at his hands and cash in the diaconite. Conquered by Chrysostom's radiant sanctity and sublime eloquence, Cation placed himself with tender fervor under his spiritual direction, prepared to give up the quiet of the desert for the profit to be drawn from the presence of such a master. But the vengeful Theophilus contrived to have St. John Chrysostom exiled not long after, and in 405 Cation and Germanus accompanied Bishop Palladius to Rome with a letter from the clergy and people to Pope Innocent I, appealing for his support of the unjustly deposed Archbishop. St. Cassian spent twelve years in Rome and was raised to the priesthood there. He then went to Marseille, where he founded the monastery of St. Victor over the tomb of a third-century martyr and the women's monastery of St. Saviour. As an experienced ascetic and a discerning shepherd of souls, he adapted the authentic traditions of the Eastern Fathers for the crowd of monastics who hastened to his two foundations, taking account of the particular conditions of life in Gaul, including the climate and the character of the people. Then, at the request of St. Castor, Bishop of Apt, he composed his Canobitic Institutions for the monasteries founded by the bishop in Provence. In describing the way of life of the monks of Egypt, he moderates whatever would be too austere for the Gallic monks with reference to the practice which obtained in Palestine, Cappadocia, and Mesopotamia. If one puts into practice whatever is possible within reason, he wrote, the observance is equally perfect even with unequal means. He goes on to describe the eight basic passions and the remedies which bring the soul to the perfection of virtue. Later on, he completed his spiritual instruction with the conferences, in which he sets out the more advanced stages in the contest for purity of heart and contemplation, ascribing his teaching to the great anchorites whom he had met in Egypt. St. Cassian thus provided the nascent monasticism of Gaul with its doctrinal framework by giving it to drink from the life-giving wellspring of the teaching of the Desert Fathers. Being a faithful disciple of the great Cappadocian doctors and of St. John Chrysostom, St. John Cassian resisted the excessive separation of human nature and grace postulated by St. Augustine, in view of the struggle against Pelagianism. Although every perfect gift and all grace comes in the last analysis from God, the Father of Lights, human freedom, created in the image of the absolute freedom of God and renewed by holy baptism, is called to respond to and to cooperate with 
divine grace in order to bring forth the salutary fruits of the holy virtues in the soul. Thus we can say with St. John Chrysostom that the work of God is to give grace, the work of man is to show faith. Augustine's more extreme adherents reacted strongly against his doctrines of the monks of Provence, which was only the expression of the traditional teaching of the Greek fathers, and they accused St. Cassian of the putative heresy of semi-Pelagianism. No friend to noise and to debate, the holy ascetic, having learned in the inwardness of divine contemplation the secret of gentle and unbroken peace and of cheerful tranquillity, kept silent without seeking to justify himself. He gave back his soul to God in peace about the year 436. Regarded as a saint by his contemporaries, he has been venerated ever since by all the monks of the West as their father and one of their greatest teachers. His precious relics remain to this day at the Abbey of St. Victor in Marseille. Blessed is the Lord, who is now and for the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to Thee, O God, glory to Thee. O Heavenly King, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who art everywhere present and fill us all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and abide in us and cleanse us from every impurity and save our souls, O Good One. Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. O Most Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our transgressions. O Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. In thee the image was preserved with exactness, O Father. For taking up thy cross, thou didst follow Christ. And by thy deeds thou didst teach us to overlook the flesh, for it passes away, but to attend to the soul, since it is immortal. Wherefore, O righteous John, thy spirit rejoices with the angel. In the deep abyss in times of old, all of Pharaoh's mighty host was overwhelmed by the power supreme to arms. When the word took on our flesh, he utterly crushed and blotted out pernicious sin. For the Lord, who is most glorified, has gloriously been glorified. O Holy Father John Cassian, pray to God for us. After crowning thy life with divine virtues, O righteous Cassian, thou hast departed to God, of whom do thou ask deliverance from failings, we pray, for us who celebrate with faith thy holy translation. Holy Father John Cassian, pray to God for, for us. With whole heart, turning towards God, O wonder-worthy Cassian, thou didst turn away from all passionate thoughts, and thou became light, 
deified by participation in the immaterial. Wherefore we honour thee and keep festival on thy memory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. With thine divine teachings, O Cassian, thou became a physician of souls, setting the understanding of monastics in good order by grace, and masterfully showing them the path that leads on to eternal life for all blessed God bear us. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. We all know thee to have conceived without a man or pure one, for thou gavest birth past understanding unto God clothed in mortal flesh, who makes the assembly of the righteous to shine. Wherefore, we laud thee faithfully, magnifying him that was born of thee. O Lord, the desert, the barren church of the nations, flowered as a lily at thy presence, whereby my heart is established. O Holy Father John Cash, and pray to God for us. Christ, the enlightenment of those in darkness, revealed thee as a star shining in the height of the church, O all famed and most wise Father, thou comeliness of a city. Holy Father John Cash, and pray to God for Imitating us. Imitating him that experienced the cross and saved the world, O Cash, and Thou was crucified to the world and the passions, repelling the craftiness of the demons. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Thy heart, being filled with wisdom, gushed forth an abyss of teachings in the Holy Spirit, O all-wise Father, richly watering the flocks of man. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O all blameless virgin, by thy mediations I pray thee heal my soul, which is enfeebled with passions and every uprising of the most evil demons. Thou wast devoted unto God as one holy, and shining brightly with all manner of virtue, thou didst flash forth occasion splendid as the sun, ever pouring out the light of thy God-given teachings in the hearts of all of them that with faith show thee honor. Now do thou earnestly entreat Christ God for those who praise Thee with longing and ardent love. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. To God's birth giver, let us run now most earnestly, we sinners all, and wretched ones, and fall prostrate, in repentance calling from the depths of our souls, Lady, come unto our aid, have compassion upon us. Hasten thou, for we are lost in a throng of transgressions. Turn not thy servants away with empty hands, for thee alone do we have as our only hope. Neither an angel nor yet an ambassador, O my Lord, but thyself incarnate camest from a virgin and holy maid, rescuing me the whole man. Wherefore I cry to thee, glory to thy power, O Lord my God. O holy Father John Cash, and pray to God for us. With thy struggles, O mazy uprisings of the flesh, subject to the spirit, O righteous Cash, and with thy sacred admonitions, thou didst lay bare all the cunning and treachery of the deceiver. Holy Father John Cash, and pray to God for us. Being voluntarily dead to the world, thou didst receive the portion of the life to come, O all celebrated Cash. And thou didst write statutes for the guidance and perfection of man. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The Spirit's grace made its dwelling in thy soul, O all-blessed one, and most manifestly showed thee to be above all the considerations of the flesh and the snares of the deceiver. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Thou ineffably gavest birth to the timeless one when he came on the time, O all-blameless virgin, 
and he has made the righteous to shine, who have excelled in faith and have humbled the serpent, the author of evil. Thou art become the mediator between God and men, O Christ God, for through thee, O Master, we have been brought out of the night of ignorance and obtained access to thy Father, the author of life. O Holy Father John Cashin, pray to God for us. Thou hast been wrapped aloft, borne up on thy virtues, O inspired of God, and hast jubilantly taken up thy rest in the heavenly tabernacles, worthily receiving the rewards of thy labor. Holy Father John Cashin, pray to God for us. Reflecting the beauty of Christ in thy pure mind, thou stoods and bending by day and night, O celebrated Cashin, receiving divine manifestations therefrom. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Watered with fountains of tears like a towering tree, thou bearest thine achievements as fruit, O God-bearing Father, divinely gladdening the minds of all. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. When life dawned from thee in a manner past understanding, O Virgin, he slew the enemy that had slain our soul, and he quickened the world which unceasingly sings thy praise. Compassed by the abyss of my many sins, I invoke the boundless abyss and unfathomed deep of thy compassion, O my Christ. Raise me out of corruption, O Lord my God. O Holy Father John Cash, and pray to God for us. Walking the narrow path, O Father, thou didst show it unto all by thy words, and such as walk it aright are led on to the broad expanse of paradise. Holy Father John Cash, and pray to God Hallowed for us. Hallowed was thy life, and blessed and honorable thine end, O our Father Cash, and Companion of the Holy Angel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Thou didst cast off the slumber of slothfulness, O all blessed God bearer, and abiding vigilant in divine vision and in deeds, thou didst live like an angel upon the earth. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Jesus, the maker of beauty, longed for thee as being beautiful, as being fair. O all blameless virgin, and born of thee in the flesh, he deified me for the sake of his immeasurable God-kindness. Thy words breathe forth the sweetness of heavenly Kasha, dispelling the foul odor of passions and pleasures. But with the sweet fragrance of thy discretion and temperance, they make known the spiritual ascents in the spirit, Leading men on high, O righteous Father John Cashin, divinely sent guide of monks. The transgressing tyrants command that was set against God, fanned yet higher the flame of fire, but Christ spread the dew of the Spirit over the God-fearing children, for he is blessed and supremely glorious. O Holy Father John Cashin, pray to God for us. Entirely deified by thy supplications, bright as light, O godly-minded Cashin, thou hast revealed as a luminary that never set, wherefore thou hast made the word of salvation to flash like lightning, guiding by its light the minds of our soul who extol thee. Holy Father John Cashin, pray to God for us. Thy tongue, sharpened by the Spirit, clearly marked out the saving law, O All-Blessed One, and set forth the patterns whereby all the flocks of monks to their joy are ever set in good order. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Thou hast bountifully streamed forth with saving thoughts and words that drive away the heart's ignorance, O divinely wise Father. Wherefore, O righteous Cashin, we faithfully honor thee as we keep thy old holy memorial. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Thou became the bright chamber of God the Word, and the fiery throne whereon the incarnate Word took up his rest because of his extreme goodness. 
Do thou therefore entreat him, O pure one, that he take pity and have mercy on us. The fiery furnace in Babylon once divided its operations by divine command, burning up the Chaldeans, but be doing the faithful who chanted, All ye works bless ye the Lord. O Holy Father John Cashin, pray to God for us. Shining like a star in doctrine and way of life, O Cashin, thou enlightens the whole fullness of the earth, taking away the gloom of ignorance and urging all to sing. All you works, bless you the Lord. Holy Father John Cashin, pray to God for us. Undying, thou didst set like the sun, O all blessed Father, Thou left thy words behind as unfading rays that enlighten our souls, as with faith we keep thy holy memorial and glorify the Lord. We bless, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Lord. Released from the body, O renowned Cassian, thou inexpressibly enjoys the spiritual beauty, and art deemed worthy to look on the things that the armies of angels see, as they sing, all you works, bless you the Lord. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Thou art most spacious in the heavens, O Virgin, for thou hast inexpressibly conceived God, who in no wise can be contained, and thou hast brought him forth beyond understanding, twofold in nature, but possessing one hypostasis as befits God. Our God and Lord, the Son of the Father, who is without beginning, has appeared to us incarnate of a virgin to enlighten those in darkness and to gather the dispersed. Wherefore we magnify the all him Theotokos. O Holy Father John Cash, and pray to God for us. Strength and power was given thee of God to destroy the principalities of the ruler of this world. Wherefore, since thou in truth hast triumphed mightily, O God-bearing Father Cashin, thou art numbered in the choirs of the righteous in gladness. Holy Father John Cashin, pray to God for like us. Like a sweet-scented rose, the God-inspired words of thy divine tongue make us fragrant. For thou became the sweet fragrance of God, who was incarnate for our sakes in his immeasurable mercy, O all-venerable God-bearer. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Let us leap for joy, you man, dancing in spirit, rejoicing now in Cassian's memorial. Let us chant with praise unto God, who is wondrous in his saints, and who sanctifies them that worship him with faith. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Thou didst renew the corrupted nature of our forefather, when thou virginally gavest birth past nature to the fashioner of all nature, and beholding him of old suspended on the cross, O all holy Virgin Mother, thou didst wail in lamentation. In thee the image was preserved with exactness, O Father, for taking up thy cross thou didst follow Christ, and by thy deeds thou didst teach us to overlook the flesh, for it passes away, but to attend to the soul, since it is immortal. Wherefore, O righteous John Cashin, thy spirit rejoices with the angels. Wisdom, most holy mother of God, save us. More honorable than the cherubim and beyond compare, more glorious than the seraphim, thee who without corruption gave us birth to God the Word, the very Theotokos, thee do we magnify. Glory to you, Christ, God, O hope, glory to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Holy Father, bless. May Christ, O true God, in the prayers of his holy and all pure mother, with the prayers of St. John the Baptist, of the holy and all praised apostles, with the power and under the protection of the holy life-giving cross and all the holy bodiless powers of heaven, 
For the prayers of our fathers among the saints, Ninian and Cuthbert, the bishops of God, Sisoes, the great brand and the navigator, Oren of Iona, Columba of Iona, Kenneth, Ronan, Molwog, all the saints of all these islands, protectors of our monastery and our community. With the prayers of our righteous father, John Cash and the Confessor, with the prayers of our righteous father, Germanus of Dacia, nowadays the Broja in Romania, fellow ascetic of St. John Cashin, with the prayers of our righteous father, Cashin, the recluse of the Kiev caves, and those with them whose memory we keep this day. With the prayers of the holy ancestors of God, Joachim and Dana, and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us, for he is good. And he loves mankind. Amen. May the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy upon us and save us. Amen.